Transformation. What happened in there? Oh man, I'm just blown away by the sound. I've never heard music like that before. That's the best sound I ever heard in a car ever in my life. As a matter of fact, it might be some of the best sound I ever heard. No, I never thought I would hear a sound like that out of a car. That's for in a car, I should say. So it sounded incredible. We just heard the best sounding digital music I've ever heard. This is what music is and it's supposed to sound like and feel like. That music made me feel good. Much better than I felt in a long time listening to music. Yeah, well I got my drug of choice. Yeah. It's, uh, it's now potent again. It's great! <laughs> Amazing. So beautiful. <laughs> Man, that was a that was a joy and a treat to just be exposed to that. It's unbelievable to hear the difference side by side. It's uh, it, you really you really forget listening to your iPod how amazing the music can be. Really fantastic. This gives it to you as good as you can get it. You know. Wow, that was no, it was so incredibly crisp, and I would definitely use this all the time. Wow, <laughs> that's like vinyl. That's better than vinyl. This is how music should be heard. Wow. When you switch from 192 to CD, you're like, whoa! <laughs> so it just like locks the low end yeah. off. <laughs> you know, you listen to the CD, it's like listening to someone twinging on a fucking rubber band oh, compared to, you, you know, the you full scope of what music is. It's true that CD quality and MP3 quality, above all, or under all, yeah. is, is, is simply not, uh, it's, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't give us back what we, what, what we put down. When you listen to uh, like the CD version or the MP3 version, um, it's that it's gone through those changes. It's sort of lost that original intention. For the convenience and the portability of an MP3, oh, they're great. But it's a, a little bit like seeing a, a, a Xerox of the Model E. The sound has just gotten so bad and people don't care about that anymore. And drums don't even sound like drums anymore. And this sounds like basically like you have a record player in your car. I listen to vinyl a lot and I think this is the only other time I've heard a digital experience that equals that or goes beyond that. It's starting to sound like a really amazing, warm, dynamic um, analog recording. Seriously, like like he said, I've listened to this song a thousand times but never like this before. I'm definitely going to invest in one of these. <laughs> I've definitely listened to the song like Heart of Gold a million times and that literally sounded like I was hearing it for the first time fresh on a vinyl record player. It's one of the Christmas sounds I've heard in a while. Definitely. It's, it's vinyl quality. Yeah, that's cool. It sounds like a lot different than just a regular iPod. It sounds like I'm actually there. That's cool. I want one of these really bad. <laughs> it's really a difference. It's like, a, like, I don't know, curved and round and, and, there's, and there's a dynamic. It doesn't just doesn't seem like it hits a wall. Like the sound and the feeling and the energy of it was so richer and fuller and warmer and fatter and yummier. The highs were like butter and you can, you can feel everything in its place. It was definitely more of a surround sound feel. Um, it was more like I was actually there. Oh, you really hear like everything. You're in the mixing board. <laughs> Sounds like you're, it's, it's all around you. You're next to, uh, you're next to Bob Dylan. <laughs> it's really cool. This is unbelievable because it's all there. You're right in the middle of this amazing thing and still you hear details. It's just, I don't know how that happens, but that's what it is. You could hear the, the reverb from the piano and the guitars and everything ringing out like a sound I'd never heard in a song before. The fact that you can like walk around with vinyl quality sound, this is awesome. Just let me know where to get it. You hear a song in a deeper way. It's more moving. It's more emotional. It seems to touch your soul more. And it just sounded uh, more analog, less sort of deteriorated. She felt it more in her bum, which was a good thing. <laughs> the ability for people at home to hear music again, the way it really sounds, like we heard on records, is a big thing. This is the moment now where, where people can begin to pay attention to quality again. It's not just like something for hi-fi buffs to hear the top of the hi-hat. It's the vibe, man. It's the feel of the music gets dramatically altered. It's great that somebody like Neil who cares enough about music and, you know, getting in its purest form is going to bring that and give people the opportunity to hear what we're hearing in the studio. You know, whatever year it was, how it comes off the tape, right to your ears. It's organic as it gets. All this technology is to get out of the way 
of the original experience. So if that's the deal, like if that made me feel emotional in that situation, imagine something I'd carry in my pocket where I could just like yeah. dive and like really hear the music. The best sound quality you can imagine. How it's supposed to be listened to. It's incredible. It's amazing the way music should be heard. It's very clever. Just sat in the future for two minutes at Bonnaroo. It was pretty wild. It's a vehicle to the future. Pono is about the music, it's about the people who make the music and the way it sounds to us when we're in the studio making it. It's about you hearing what we hear. And that hasn't happened in a long time. We wanted you to be part of this and to help us to launch this music system into the world. It's a music ecosystem. We think that uh, as music lovers, having you along with us from the very beginning with the special players that we're offering will be uh, a cool thing for you to be part of and for us to be part of with you. So what is underwater listening all about? When you're on the bottom of the ocean and you have a huge tank over your, on your back and you, in a big glass ball over your head, that's kind of, you know, you're walking around in the murk and there's big fish down there. That's kind of like listening to an MP3. And when, you, when you're listening to a CD, you've risen to, you know, maybe a couple of hundred feet below the surface, something like that. And you're still underwater. You're, you're not quite in air. But when you make it to 192, you actually break through the surface and you're breathing air. And the feeling is different. Actually is a visceral relief. You feel good. Your body feels better. <laughs> Investigation into sound. And, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And how it's supposed to be heard. Yeah. Yeah. Very telling, almost angering. In you fact, can, yeah, you can hear uh, what the MP3 does physically. You know, yeah, the, the visceral, how it's destroying the sound of music. Yeah, I mean, there's a way that it hits you aesthetically, but then there's also a way it hits mm -hmm. you physically, and then you can feel the difference. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there's a narrowness and when a it's not flatness. Yeah. And yeah. on CDs as well, compared to what we just heard. The yeah. CDs are small. But it's like hearing a different yeah. song. Yeah. I mean, you're not hearing the same song. The thing that amazes yeah. me is the, the as the Joey, touching on what Joey is saying, is the, the width of the stereo field. Mm -hmm. That was a, a real surprising difference, yeah. how wide the stereo image was. And then uh, the extension on the bottom mm -hmm. and the, the, the smoothness of a vocal. And yeah. things like reverb, yeah. tails, and all that yeah. kind of business. Yeah. And there's there's a space in in songs that that you don't hear with uh, digitally compressed files. And '96 is so superior to to the way most music is recorded right. these days. And even that was pale, pale compared to the yeah. The, yeah. the jump is exponential. Not, you yeah, really yeah. you really can tell and feel it. Yeah. Yeah. So the apathy, like yeah. I'm, I'm in the studio all the time. And, work with people and they're like well you know it doesn't, doesn't really matter doesn't matter nobody's gonna hear they're just gonna listen to it on mp3 yeah. right. that's now that's <laughs> out the window now gone. we can now we can like make it how we want this it to sound like rescuing it yeah it's yeah. crucial yeah. it's an artist driven movement yeah to take it back you gonna drive i'll drive i couldn't drive this much that's okay but you can ride We had one of the great sound experiences of our life. I mean, it was just absolutely amazing. And you could feel, you know, what kind of an impact it can make in terms of really addressing so many of the problems that exist in today's record industry. Uh, the, the, the sound is absolutely amazing. And we were, you know, transformed by listening in this fashion. It was fabulous. Neil is so dedicated to doing this. I know what his mind is like <laughs> when he decides to go after something. There's no stopping him. This is going to be a huge, huge breakthrough in terms of, you know, sound technology. 
and it's really exciting to be around. When a kid hears a song for the first time, you got to remember, these are young people. They're, they're fresh. They're peaking. All their senses are there. Their vision is great. Their hearing is amazing. Their physical abilities are at their peak. Everything is tuned in, just like nature meant it to be. There's been very little damage. So just so I can sleep at night, I want to bring back Pono. I want to bring back real music. Pono means righteous. Pono is the one, the whole. It's a Hawaiian word. So I want everybody to hear music that way. That's why, you know, we're, we're on Kickstarter, so that we can share this with everyone, and everyone who loves music can share in the release of Pono and the launch of the real music experience in the 21st century. That's what we're here to do.